or was maybe it his parents? And Jesus answered, this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. Amen. Then we see the, the, that Jesus spits on the ground. He makes a mud pie. And he puts it on a blind man's eyes. And then tells him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And this beggar obeys and gets his sight. I want you to close your eyes for a moment. How hard, how difficult would it be for you to be able to get around? If we had time, I'd probably ask for a volunteer to blindfold them and ask them to go to the door. And see how if they can make a straight line down the row, uh, down the aisle there without bumping into chairs and into people. Uh, how difficult would it be for you to wake up if you had no sight? Now most blind people have all their furniture set where they know exactly where everything is. It's not a good idea to go into a blind person's home and rearrange the furniture. But they know how to get up from bed. They know exactly how to make to the CR. They know uh, what it's like to be able to wash their face and so forth and so on. But then they go to the closet and to pick out the clothes they want to wear today. But they will never have the opportunity to see the color of the beautiful sweater that may be red. And they don't want to match it with something that may look so ugly but they want to be able to be like normal people. It would be very difficult in life without having sight. But can you imagine what it would be like to be born blind from birth? Never having seen colors before. It's difficult to understand what a sunset actually looks like. Unable to complete simple tasks. Always depending on others. And here this man in John chapter 9 meets one that he can only hear. And he hears them talking about this blind individual and soon realizes they're talking about me. And they're questioning among themselves whether I have caused my blindness as the result of sin or wrongdoing in my heart. And now he senses that a stranger is nearby. Bending down where he is sitting. And this stranger continues to speak to his friends. Saying that the work of the Lord should be done in him. And soon he begins to put something on my eyes. What would your reaction be? Now, of course, we have hindsight. We can see what his reaction was, that he was obedient. But what would you do if you were born blind, having never seen, and then somebody comes along and packs mud on your eyes and then says, says to you, go wash in the pool. I want you to know, as being obedient as he was, that he was going to find his way I don't know if he needed a friend to help him or maybe he knew the way down the road by himself. But nevertheless, he was determined. He was desperate for something to happen in him. Amen. There comes that time in our lives that perhaps there's a desperation for the things of God like we have never felt for him before. There's something that begins to stir within us as God begins to birth a change and a newness in our walk with Him. Here this man, having never seen before, you cannot say that he regained his sight. He did not regain his sight. But for the first time ever, he could see. His world had become new. Amen. He had a life that in an instant had become expanded. He could then look down the street and beyond. He could see the horizons. He could see the sunset at the end of the day. And no doubt the very next morning 
He had heard about the sunset and he rose to be able to go outside just to look at the beauty of the sky with all the splendid colors, something that he had never imagined before. His life expanded. But then we see the Pharisees. They show up in all of their righteous attitude and they demand to speak to the blind man. How were your eyes open, they asked. He responded, the man they called Jesus. He shows up and he puts mud on my eyes and I washed it off and now I can see. And the Pharisees and their righteous attitude, surely this man is not of God because this miracle was performed on the Sabbath day. Further they proclaimed he can't be God because he healed a sinner. A sinner so bad that he was blind from birth. Help us dear God not to be in the stalemate of this religious attitude where God begins to do something and we say, oh, but hey, we've got rules in the house. And surely if God would work, he would not do it that way. Help us, Lord. Spare us, oh God, if we ever come to the place where we say it's got to be done this way. Like, like some people say, it's my way or the highway. <laughs> Sounds like an employer, eh? He can't be God. And finally, when they got so frustrated with the blind man, the Pharisees called his parents. Is this your son? Was he born blind? How was he healed? And so they're, they're, they're dumbfounded. Yes, this is our son, as you well know. Yes, he was born blind, as you have already ascertained. But how he was healed... You will have to ask him yourself. So what do you say, Mr. Blind Man? What do you say about this Jesus? Is he a prophet? Which we read in verse 17, he so emphatically, they say unto the blind man again, What sayest thou of him that he hath opened thine eyes? And he said, the blind man said, He is a prophet. Now the Pharisees became so upset at the blind man that they threw him out of their presence. But I like then what it shows us in chapter 9 beginning in verse 35. Jesus heard that they had cast him out. Now it's enough that Jesus has healed him of his physical blindness. But now look what he is doing. He begins to work not only on the physical blindness, he begins to work on the spiritual blindness. Jesus heard they had cast him out. When he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said to him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Hallelujah. Verse 39, Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world, that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, said unto him, are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, We see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. The physical blindness was taken care of, but now Jesus had something more important to deal with. The spiritual blindness of not only this individual, but he was just shaking the very religious foundations of his nation to the core. Spiritual blindness 
is where a person is not able to see who Jesus Christ really is. Spiritual blindness is not seeing that Jesus Christ can rock your world when he becomes your savior. Spiritual blindness is not seeing that Jesus Christ desires you, 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 you to surrender to him and to his will. Hallelujah. And to accept the things he wants for you. To surrender to his will. So easy to say. But when it comes right down to it. You know what you want in life. You know your goal and your destiny. That you established. Even probably when you were a teenager. You knew that you had a desire to come and get. Or I should say get out of the Philippines. And go somewhere to be able to find work. And so you ended up here in Hong Kong. But then there was an introduction at the, at the foot of the cross. There was an introduction to your Savior, Jesus Christ. And everything that you had ever dreamed of, everything that you ever imagined, all of a sudden had to be thrown out the window. And you began to surrender completely to the one who would provide for you, watch over you, take care of you, provide your necessities, praise God, not your wants, but your needs. Hallelujah. And your eyes were open spiritually. But here we see in this illustration, Jesus or the disciples did not really understand this. They had been with Jesus many, many months to this point. So when they saw this blind man, their curiosity got the best of them. Who is at fault as to the reason why this man is blind? Who did wrong? So Jesus reveals his power. Every time that we see Jesus perform a miracle, it was to show that he is the Messiah. And that he is who he says he is. Amen. Now, the disciples had a blind spot in their lives. Now, some of you that are drivers, you know what a blind spot is when you're going down the highway. You've got the side mirrors that are able to help you to see what's coming on the side. But there's that one particular area that you know it is of necessity to be able to turn your head slightly to look at the peripheral vision as to what is sitting right on your tail because it's not seen in the mirror. And if you were to change lanes, there would be an accident in the highway and your name would be put in the paper either because you have died on the highway or perhaps because the accident you have caused because you're not paying attention because you had a blind spot. Well, here, the disciples had a blind spot. And, that, and when they could not see that what Jesus saw, then they asked questions. And it's not wrong to ask questions, but just know how to word the questions. Instead of saying, who was at fault here, Jesus? Perhaps they could have reworded it just a little bit different to get the answer they were really looking for. But, you know, the Pharisees, they taught, and the disciples were students of these Pharisees at one time. And the Pharisees said that surely if there is wrong in your life, you've got a curse of God on your life. They taught that surely there is sin, and as a result, you are being...